Greetings, ladies and gentlemen, dear listeners. This is Comesa Radio Africa, the voice of Comesa, the organization everybody wants to be associated with. The mind, the journey, the destiny. We apply our mind to the journey that takes us to our destiny. That is our philosophy. It is about a plugged and active mind, sharing mind, futuristic mind, and inquiring mind. The journey is about enthusiastically promoting our ideas, giving as we learn, retaining and investing our learnings, and searching for new opportunities at all times. The destiny when attained is signified by high productivity and profitability, social responsibility and caring for each other, growth and sustainability, renewal and survival. Our philosophy is inspired by the following quote from Mahatma Gandhi, which contains the drivers of our behaviors. I quote, Your beliefs become your thoughts. Your thoughts become your weights. Your weights become your actions. Your actions become your habits. Your habits become your values. Your values become your destiny. Code closed. We inform and entertain. We develop and educate. We empower and support. We associate and network. That is the idea. We are a business and professional management services 24-7 internet streaming radio station. We broadcast music and talk shows across the world. Our objective is to use the African storytelling and the Lakota conversation methodology in offering career coaching, education and learning guidance, continuous professional development, enterprise and entrepreneurship development, and connecting supply to demand. Our talk shows aim to affirm and support business professionals and entrepreneurs in their personal and professional journey of bringing a difference to the world. These are talk shows that recognize excellence and greatness. Professionals and entrepreneurs are invited as a recognition of the great contribution they are making to humanity. We have a network of associates, members and stakeholders who know our quality standards and therefore make recommendations to our production team. The the conversations become lifelong account of our guests' work since they are recorded on Spreaker Studio and distributed via Comeza Podcast, Spreaker Podcast, Apple Podcast, Google Podcast, Spotify, iHeartRadio, CastBox, Deezer, Podcast Addict, Podchaser, YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and many more other platforms to be added. We are building a solid ecosystem of professionals and entrepreneurs committed to the empowerment of others, collaboration across sectors, sharing of insights and knowledge, building a base for succession and inheritance, and safeguarding the legacies for generations after us. We inherited these legacies from our forefathers and mothers not to waste them, but to pass them on to generations after us. That is our duty and responsibility. The same principles that govern our organization are the principles that govern Cometa Radio Africa, and they are winning with our customers and all other stakeholders, internal or external, holistic human capital development and talent retention, technical and administrative competency development as a foundation of our business model, demanding individual and organizational accountability, ethical and inclusive management and leadership practice, 
and consciously driving progressive transformational leadership in individuals and organizations. Should you want to become a guest at our shows or advertise at Comesa Radio Africa, feel free to write to us and talk to our marketing division at call center at comesa-goc.com. To know more about commercial development agencies and how to engage us in your corporate social responsibility projects, visit our website www.commerciadevelopment.com or write to the Office of the Development Agencies at admin at commerciadevelopment.com. And should you want to apply for individual or corporate membership at Cometa Friends and Supporters Club NPO, you may do so online at www.cometaclub.africa. And you are welcome also to send us email, this time at callcenter at cometa-goc.com. My name is Sam Zima. I am the CEO and Executive Business Coach at Commerza GOC International, PTY Limited. You may check our website, www.commerza-goc.com. I want us to focus on our directorship development and governance 101 conversation that takes place at Commerza Radio Africa during the Semtima coaching show. So this podcast and broadcast is to introduce this coaching, this program 101 and uh, lay the foundation for the future programs and also to set and make clarity for the guests that we will be inviting. Let me disclose that I'm using the content from the report by the PricewaterhouseCoopers, and I quote, The release of King 3 report on the 1st of September 2009 represents a significant milestone in the evolution of corporate governance in South Africa and bring with it significant opportunities for organizations that embrace its principles. At Price Waterhouse Coopers, PwC, we believe that free enterprise prospers in an environment of good and balanced corporate governance. While we understand that achieving good governance is a complex task, we believe that sound governance practices offer numerous practical benefits and that organizations should integrate such practices into their operational processes. Code closed. That comes from the report, and that report by PwC can be obtained at the following link, http semicolon forward slash forward slash www.pwc dot co dot z a forward slash e n forward slash king three number three forward slash ethical hyphen leadership hyphen and hyphen corporate hyphen citizenship forward slash index dot j h t m l that is how you can access the report And I would like to acknowledge the PwC for such a comprehensive report following the King uh, 3 release on the 1st of September 2009. So in this uh, episode, I'm going to go through a number of themes that I would like them to inform our guests at this future program that we are going to be running at the Commercial Radio Africa and uh, this program is uh, titled Directorship Development and Governance 101 Conversation 
and it's been broadcast during Sam Zima Coaching Show at Komeza Radio Africa. Most directors that are confronted with uh, issues of governance will be directors of uh, um, companies that have boards and more probably have shareholders and they are in many cases listed on stock exchange and therefore governance is very critical as they have diverse stakeholders whose interest is protected by Companies Act. And those directors who serve on the board of those companies are expected to practice governance and behave in a particular manner. The following are the major duties or responsibilities of the board of directors of a company. Number one, they are charged with the responsibility of establishing and updating and maintaining the organization's mission. Secondly, they have responsibilities for the appointment of organization's top officers, especially the CEO and his or her executives. The next responsibility is the establishment of the compensation levels of these top officers, including their salaries and bonuses. Normally that is done through the reward committee of the board. They mandate the company's compliance with legal and ethical dictates and they set company objectives and authorize the implementation of the long-term strategies by the management. They are also expected to set broad organization policies that could cover areas like labor issues, employee benefits, benefits, management relations, and products and service levels. Those are the major responsibilities of the board of directors of any company, especially stock exchange listed companies, and any director that intends to join such boards should know that those are the responsibilities that they have to perform as members of the board. We also would like to address the following success factors as listed in the PwC report, that we can ex- expantiate with our guests whenever they come to our radio program. Uh, the following are listed. The, the board of directors represent the interest of the stakeholders, and they must carefully monitor the actions of the senior executives of the company to promote and protect those interests. Secondly, the board of directors success factor is the link of the organization to its influential stakeholders in the external environment. And by so doing, then they will be promoting the organization's mission while ensuring that uh, they attend to the concerns of the society. Success factor number three is that they exercise independent and objective thinking in the appraising of the actions of the senior executives and the introduction of the strategic changes in the organization. The next success factor is that they should pay special attention to the composition of the board, their own board, and ensure that they have an appropriate mix of the inside and outside directors, and, and that is the members, and the, and the inclusion of any uh, previously disadvantaged communities or, or individuals, I mean to say, in, in that board 
of directors. They are expected to have a well-developed structure in running the board and that could include appropriate committees so that they can perform the tasks that the board is expected to perform. And those committees could include remuneration committees, audit committees, social and ethics committees, risk committees, etc., etc. However, that does not uh, 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 remove the responsibilities from the board members. So they form this board without necessarily abdicating their responsibilities because these boards will be doing the work on behalf of the board of directors. The board, the directors meet frequently to discuss progress in achieving the organizational goals and to provide counsel to the executives whenever required or necessary. And lastly, the board of directors uh, evaluate the CEO's performance at least annually and provide guidance on issues of the leadership style of the CEO and his or her ex-co-members. The King Report 3 introduced some key principles and uh, here are some of them. One, good governance is essentially about effective leadership. It says that leaders need to define the strategy, provide the direction, and establish the ethics and values that will influence and guide practices and behaviors with regard to sustainability performance. Number two, principle number two is that sustainability is now the primary moral and economic imperative and it is one of the most important sources of both opportunities and risks for business. Principle number three is about innovation, fairness and collaboration, which have now become key aspects of any transition to sustainability. By innovation, we understand that this is something that provides new ways of doing things, including profitable responses to sustainability, whereas fine fairness refers to vital, it's become very vital, it's become vital because of the social injustices which are unsustainable. And lastly, collaboration is often a prerequisite for large-scale change. Principle number four, Social transformation and redress is important and needs to be integrated within the broader transition to sustainability. Those are the four principles that King Report 3 introduced. And we take note that nature, business and society are interconnected in complex ways that need to be understood by decision makers. And incremental changes towards sustainability are not sufficient. We need a fundamental shift in the way companies and directors act and organize themselves. And integrating sustainability and social transformation in a strategic and coherent manner will give rise to greater opportunities, to efficiencies and benefits for both the company and the society at large. Together with those principles, there are some requirements that need to be met by the board of directors. And those requirements are the need for an annual integrated report that focuses on the impact of the organization in the economic, environmental, and social spheres. Requirement number two, a statement by the audit committee to the board and shareholders on the effectiveness of internal financial controls that must be included in the integrated report. Requirement number three is the consideration of the strategic role of information technology and its importance from a governance perspective. And requirement number four is the positioning 
of internal audit as a strategic function that conducts a risk-based internal audit and provides a written assessment of the company's system of internal control uh, and internal financial controls. Requirement number five is the governance of risk through formal risk management processes. And now uh, let us look at the role and the functions of the board. This is very important to be understood by anyone that becomes a director and joins the board. Here they are. The board should act as the focal point for and the custodian of corporate governance. Rule number rule and function number two, the board should appreciate that strategy, risk, performance, and sustainability are inseparable. The board should provide effective leadership that is based on an ethical foundation. The board should ensure that the company is and is seen to be a responsible corporate citizen. The board should ensure that the company's ethics are managed effectively. The board should ensure that the company has an effective an independent audit committee and it should be responsible for the governance of risk and the board should be responsible also for the information technology governance. It should ensure that the company complies with applicable laws and considers adherence to non-binding rules, codes, and standards. The board should ensure that there is an effective risk-based internal audit. And it should appreciate that stakeholders' perceptions affect the company's reputation. It should ensure the integrity of the company's integrated report. And the board should report on the effectiveness of the company's system of internal controls. And together with its directors, it should act in the best interests of the company. It should consider business rescue proceedings or other turnaround mechanisms as soon as the company is financially distressed as defined in the Act. And the board should elect a chairman of the board who is an independent non-executive Director, this is very important, independent and non executive. And the CEO of the company should never be made to fulfill the role of the chairman of the board. That is not acceptable by the Act and according to King 3 report. And the board should appoint the chief executive officer and establish a framework for the delegation of authority to the CEO and his or her ex-co members. They should, they should compromise, the board should, comp- should not compromise the balance of power. Sorry, they should comprise, the board should comprise a balance of power with a majority of non-executive directors. The majority of non-exec- these non-executive directors should be independent. 
and directors should be appointed through a formal process that is known to everybody participating in such process. The induction of an, an ongoing training and development of directors should be conducted through a formal process. And the board should be assisted by a competent, suitably qualified and experienced company director, I mean company secretary, to in conducting its affairs. The evaluation of the board, its committees and the individual directors should be performed on an annual basis. And the board should delegate certain functions to well-structured committees but without abdicating its own responsibilities. A governance framework should be agreed between the group and its subsidiary boards. And companies should make sure that they remunerate their directors and executives fairly and responsibly. Uh, These companies should also disclose the remuneration of each individual director and certain senior executives. And lastly, the shareholders should approve the company's remuneration policy. Those are the roles and functions of the directors of the, or, or, or the board of directors. Let's look at what the audit committee does or what is the responsibility of the board with regard to audit committee. So the board is expected to have an effective and independent audit committee. And the audit committee members should be suitably skilled and experienced independent non-executive directors. The audit committee should be chaired by an independent non-executive director. And the job of this, the function of the, of the audit committee is to oversee the integrated reporting. That's one of its main functions. And, and it should ensure that a combined assurance model is applied to provide a coordinated approach to all assurance activities. And it should satisfy itself of its ex- expertise, resources and experiences, uh, especially that of the company's financial finance function. The audit committee should be responsible for overseeing of the internal audit. And it should be in an integral component of the risk management process of the company. This committee is responsible for recommending the appointment of the external auditor and the overseeing of the external audit process. And the audit committee should report to the board and shareholders on how it has discharged its duties. It is also stated that the the board of directors is responsible for the governance of the risk and the following governance elements are to be taken into account. The board's responsibility for risk governance, the management's responsibility for risk management, the risk assessment, the risk response, risk monitoring, and risk assurance and risk disclosure. In terms of the responsibility of the board, the board should be responsible for the governance of risks and it should determine the levels of risk tolerance. The risk committee or audit committee should assist this board in carrying out its risk responsibilities. So it is a delegated uh, role to, to 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 the committee the two committees, one of them. 
In terms of management responsibility for risk management, the board should delegate to management the responsibility to design, implement, and monitor the risk management plan. Regarding the risk assessment, the board should ensure that the risk assessments are performed on a continual basis. And the board should ensure that frameworks and methodologies are implemented to increase the probability of anticipating unpredictable risks. With regard to risk response, the board should ensure that management considers and implements appropriate risk responses. Regarding risk monitoring, the board should ensure continuous risk monitoring by management. And with regard to risk assurance, the board should receive assurance regarding the effectiveness of the risk management process. And lastly, re-risk disclosure. The board should ensure that there are processes in place enabling complete, timely, relevant, accurate, and accessible risk disclosure to stakeholders. With regard to the governance of information technology, the board should be responsible for that governance and it should be the information technology should be aligned with the performance and sustainability objectives of the company and the board should delegate to management that responsibility for the implementation of an IT governance framework and it should monitor and evaluate significant IT investments and expenditure. The information technology should form an integral part of the company's risk management and the board should ensure that information assets are managed effectively and a risk committee and audit committee are there to assist the board in carrying out all its IT responsibilities. The company is expected to comply with the laws, rules, codes and standards and therefore the board should ensure that that takes place. And the board and each individual directors should have a working understanding of the effect of the applicable laws, rules, codes and standards on the company and its business and compliance should form an integral part of the company's risk management process and the board should delegate to management the implementation of an effective compliance framework and processes. Let us look at the internal audit governance responsibility of the board. The need for and the role of the internal audit. The board should ensure that there is an effective risk-based internal audit. The approach and the plan, the internal audit should follow a risk-based approach to its plan. And the internal audit should provide a written assessment of the effectiveness of the company's system of internal controls and risk management. And it should be responsible for overseeing the internal audit. The status of the internal audit in the company, so that it should be strategically positioned to achieve its objectives. Regarding the governance of the stakeholders' relationships, the board should appreciate that the stakeholders' perceptions affect the company's reputation, as stated earlier on, and the board should delegate to management to proactively deal with stakeholder relationships and it should strive to achieve the appropriate balance between its various stakeholder groupings in the best interest of the company. Transparent and effective communication with stakeholders is essential for building and maintaining their trust and confidence. When coming to integrated reporting and disclosure, The board should ensure the integrity of the company's integrated report. The sustainability reporting and disclosure should be integrated with the company's financial reporting 
and the sustainability reporting and disclosure should be independently assured. Lastly, we expect the board to ensure that disputes are resolved as effectively, efficiently, and expeditiously as possible. Those are the themes that uh, we would like to uh, use as a guideline for our Directorship Development and Governance 101 conversation at Comesa Radio Africa during Samzima Coaching Show. We are looking forward to welcome you on board as we start inviting uh, guests to address various aspects of the board uh, development, board governance, directorship development, and all, all compliance matters. The sequence may not necessarily be as I presented them to you, but it, the, theme, the themes will be covered and the orientation of our talk during the directorship development and uh, governance uh, 101 conversation will be more around building capacity within people that have decided to become directors or that aspires to become directors. And, and it might be a director of a board, in a board of a, of a for-profit company or for non-profit company. The, the demands are the same, the expectations are the same, the challenges are the same, and therefore we hope that we will be contributing immensely to creating awareness out there, creating excitement, and of course encouraging people to come forward and assist organizations in becoming compliant with the Companies Act and the recommendations of King reports and many other rules that we find ourselves in our daily operations of our businesses. Thank you very much once again. My name is Sam Zima. I'm the CEO and Executive Business Coach at Comerza GOC International. Check our website www.comerza-goc.com Should you want to become a member of Comerza Friends and Supporters Club and PO and join this movement of creating capacity in the directors of our companies, you may apply online at www.commerzatlab.africa, either as an individual member or a corporate member. The individual member will cost you per year 150 rands, and a corporate membership per year is 5,500 rand. And the corporate members are represented by two staff members or directors at our events uh, whenever they take place. Thank you for tuning in. Let's welcome you at our Directorship Development 101, Directorship Development and Governance 101 in the near future. Thank you. For now, you take care and goodbye.